Hello and welcome back. This is Greg French. Uh, today we're going to be covering part three of our uh, computer networking series. Uh, again, uh, CompTIA A+, Network+, uh, very important certifications uh, for IT professionals. I have both of these along with a Cisco certification and I'm also uh, certified as a Cisco instructor. Uh, we also have a network uh, uh, or a website uh, available for you, uh, Computer networktraining.net. You'll find some additional resources uh, at that network or that website that you'll probably find useful. Now let's get started. Uh, this is part three, uh, the last part of our introduction uh, to our computer network series. Uh, some common, common elements again, the protocol. Now the protocol is a set of rules uh, that are used uh, by the computers to communicate with each other. Both need to be using the same protocol so that they know what these rules are and they can set up uh, the boundaries or the conditions for exchanging data. So protocols are like a language or a set of rules, and each computer uh, having that same protocol is able to exchange data. Uh, today we use the TCP IP protocol uh, primarily. Uh, that's the one the Internet uh, has accepted. So it's pretty much what we use on all, even our local area networks because uh, we need it to connect uh, to the Internet. Common elements, data packets. Uh, data packets is a pretty important term to understand. It's actually a packet of information that is traveling across the network. What we do is we take all our files, our pictures, our data, whatever we're trying to send, and we chop it up into packets. Now each packet will have an address, uh, where it's coming from, where it's going to, and it's a part of that file or that picture that we're sending. Now, if one packet gets dropped along the way, it's easy to resend just that one packet instead of the entire file. So this is a little bit more efficient uh, for sending packets through the Internet because occasionally we do get a packet lost or destroyed, and instead of having to resend an entire file, we just resend a single packet. Much, much easier, much faster. Uh, packets can also be uh, come under different terms, datagram, segment, block, cell, or a frame. These are some of the other terms that we're uh, going to discuss along the way because they're different parts of where these packets are being uh, either created or disassembled. Uh, we change the name to either datagram or frame, and we'll talk more about that. Uh, some more common elements, addressing, a unique identifying number assigned to every workstation and device on our network. Everything that's on our network is a node, and each of these devices needs both what we call a MAC address, physical address, and an IP address, which is a logical address because we can change it with software. So we have two addresses for every device in order to be able to find those devices and be able to communicate with them. Now, transmission media. Uh, this is the type of media, could be cable, could be fiber optics, could even be wireless, but this is how we transmit the data uh, back and forth to computers. Uh, the Ethernet cable. Ethernet cable looks a little like the phone cable, but it's uh, considerably larger. It's 11 millimeters across versus 7 for the phone cable. Uh, Ethernet cable has 8 wires. The phone cable has generally 4 wires. Uh, more cables. Now this would be uh, uh, what we call fiber optics cables. We've got the ST and the SC cables here. But each one of these would have a fiber optic uh, thread running through it. Now here's an example of a data center where they have cables kind of just strewn about. There is no uh, cable management here. We've just got cables running everywhere. If you ever had to get involved in this, trying to find a cable would be just virtually impossible, really difficult, difficult to troubleshoot, difficult to manage. And I've actually seen data centers set up like this. Another one, you can't even find the equipment. You've got cables just running everywhere. Now this is an example of some good uh, cable management. You can see each cable is terminated and it's easy to see. It will be easy to identify. You have to have good cable management in order to be able to maintain and troubleshoot a network. Real, real important. It looks good, too. Uh, network services. These are some of the services that are available when we set up our network. We can have file and print services. We can actually share a single printer uh, among a lot of uh, computers. This allows us to get a little bit heavier duty uh, printer that can service uh, maybe up to 100 people or more. 
Uh, communication services will have services for to be able to communicate to computers maybe that are off-site. Uh, they can log in and uh, access the network, and we can also uh, remotely connect to them if we need to. Uh, mail services will be email services that we'll have locally uh, that people will be able to use to, so they can create and store their email. Uh, skills needed. Uh, networking professionals, they have to be able to install and configure uh, the client and the server software. They have to be able to set up both the client, which is the, just the desktop, and also the server, being able to uh, install that server software, configure it, and get it to run properly. Able to apply different data media, depending on the need. They might want to use uh, copper, uh, maybe a Cat6 cable, but if they're connecting two buildings together, they're going to have to go to a fiber optics cable, so they need to know how to apply that and implement it. Able to design and build a network. Uh, depending on uh, where you're going to be putting this network, there will be some different design considerations. You need to be able to understand uh, when to implement and when to apply either different types of media or different types of devices, depending on, on where your location is. Able to uh, configure appropriate network protocols. Uh, the protocols, what are we going to be using? Primarily TCP IP is the protocol that we use. Need to be familiar with that. Need to be able to configure it so it works properly. A lot, uh, there's a lot to TCP IP and we'll be discussing that in depth. Uh, specialties. What kind of specialty might you, uh, go after as a network, uh, professional? Well, network security is really becoming very important. Uh, network security professionals, uh, are really, really important today because of all the problems that uh, we're facing with, uh, hackers, and also viruses. You might also want to become an administrator, be able to configure that uh, server software and take care of the server. Uh, network management, design, uh, another big area. Routers and switches, the optimization of these devices to get them working very efficiently, very quickly. We're always concerned about bandwidth. We're trying to move data faster and faster. We need specialists that understand uh, the networking equipment and can configure them to optimize that bandwidth. Uh, data storage uh, on large scale environments, that's always a major concern. We always need to make sure we're backing up our data and that after we back it up, we can also uh, restore uh, servers quickly if we need to. Uh, soft skills, real important, customer relations. This is a customer oriented business. Uh, we need to be able to have those soft skills so that we can work effectively with our customers and also with other team members. Oral and written communications, really important. Dependability, teamwork, and leadership abilities. These are really important skills that the employers are really uh, concerned about. Benefits of certification, better salary. If you uh, get certified A+, plus, you can start anywhere from probably $20 to $25 an hour. If you get Network+, Plus, you're going to you're gonna start more. If you get Cisco or one of the Microsoft, you can start even higher. Uh, you can be making uh, upwards to $100,000 a year in just five years by getting those certifications. Uh, greater opportunities, uh, professional respect from your peers and from others, and access to better support. There's, there's a lot of good access uh, to uh, support uh, for getting information and getting different things that you might need as a professional through these organizations that you become members of. Uh, finding a job. Uh, the internet uh, is always a good source. We found that Craigslist is probably one of the best sources out there. Very up to date. Employers uh, really like to use the Craigslist. Uh, classified sections of the local, local newspaper is also important. Uh, network uh, with like-minded professionals and attend those career fairs and you could also enlist a recruiter. Uh, joining professional association. Association of information technology professionals very important. Also the IEEE. Uh, in summary, networks provide services, email, printer services, share, uh, sharing of files, programs, internet access, remote access, capabilities, network management. Uh, networks use communication services to allow remote users to be able to connect. Email services, internet services, uh, also network management services. Be able to control or centrally control everything. Activities, uh, Lab 1.3 to help kind of reinforce everything we've been going over and also quiz uh, 1.3 as an assessment. Thank you very much for your time. This concludes uh, the introduction uh, to computer networks. Uh, thank you again. Bye.